Science Show. We're so excited to have everyone with us, and we're so excited to have everyone watching on our app or YouTube. Uh, we have a weekly STEM show every Sunday at 3 p.m. GMT, and we're so excited to have you. Today, we have special guests coming around from all over the world to be part of the STEM show and to answer questions and discuss new knowledge. Um, again, my name is Eileen, and I'm here with some friends of mine I would love to hear more about. And um, Jihan, maybe we can start with you. Yeah. Uh, what do you do? Where are you coming from? How thank old you. are you, maybe? Thank you, Eileen. Thank you, Ivy. Uh, I'm doing great today. Uh, it's a great Sunday, and it is perfect to have Sunday again with us. Uh, so uh, some of you know maybe Professor Sunday is uh, working in Imperial College, and we have started to this uh, shows from YouTube. Uh, I think last year, it was last year, right, Sunday? <laughs> so it has been a year and we are uh, together with him again. And some of you know, uh, some of you know him, I know. And I'm a mechanical engineer. I am responsible for content development in Wind Science. We are working along with Aileen and 33 years old. Today, I am in Istanbul. So maybe we can skip to one of our friends far, from far, far away, Eileen. <laughs> yes, Aisha, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Where are you joining in from? How old are you? And maybe a fun fact. I'm in Indian. I'm from Mumbai. I'm nine years old, but I'm in the fourth grade. And um, this is my first time on the STEM show. Well, we're lucky to have you, happy to have you. Thank you for joining us, thank you. Leon, how about you? Why don't you introduce yourself? Um, my name's Leon, I'm 10 and I'm in London. And this is also my first time on the STEM show. Welcome, welcome. Abrama? Um, hi, my name is Abrama and I'm in Ghana and I'm 15 years old. This is not my first time, I don't remember. Yeah. Yeah, you, you well, have been in here. We have done a couple of stamp shows with Aburama and Sunday was there as well. Okay, and Dr. Sunday, how about you? Uh, uh, Sunday, you are muted. <laughs> yeah. I am Dr. Sunday Kupola from Imperial College London, the greatest university in the world for science, technology and medicine. And I've been on this show several times last year. We ran these shows all over the world last year. It was fantastic. And the new system we have now, the new apps we have now, I could see it's going to be exciting. So wait and join us every Sunday at 4 o'clock. And this is the first one. So let's roll it. <laughs> You're going to go out here with plenty of knowledge, plenty of interesting things that you've never seen or heard before. And that will get you to start thinking STEM, STEM, STEM. So that's awesome. 
Thank you so much, Sunday, for joining us again. We're so excited to have you with all six of us together. I think we can pretty much answer any question that comes our way and ready to put our brain knowledge all together and answer these questions. I'm ready. Thumbs up, everyone. Ready. Awesome. Okay, let's get started then. Perfect. So we're going to watch some video next. I maybe we can just uh, show uh, to our viewers in YouTube to uh, uh, if they are watching this show from YouTube, uh, they can download the Twin mobile application and they want to if they want to be a part of the interactive learning and if they want to like choose the right answer whenever they see it, they can download the Twin app by scanning the QR code and they can join the show uh, from Twin app next week. And for the ones that are, for the ones who are watching. Uh, us from to win app you will need just to tap on to the right choice whatever you think is true so uh, I think we are ready to uh, roll on but if you want to be in this show like Leon and Rama and Aisha you can reach us inside from inside of the app you can go your profile and click three dots then contact us and by starting a new conversation we will be able to hear you at the end of today's uh show stem quest one of us will be lucky enough to win a robotic art kit so whoever wins today's live stem show we will be sending a robotic art kit uh, i am done with all the announcements Eileen. if you are ready we can start watching the first video Yes, thank you, Jihan. I'm ready. Yeah, okay, go ahead then. <laughs> okay, so first off, we're going to be starting off with this video here, and we're going to see what's going on. And if you have any, any uh, explanations and, and you have seen this before, be sure to let us know because this is going to be, we're going to be talking about this for the next couple of minutes. Ready? So we're going to watch what's going on. What do you guys see? What's going on here? What do you think this might be, kids? Leon, do you yeah, have an idea? Leon? Is it like um the is it the world's weather and um the currents passing? Wow, that's a really good that's a really good guess. Maybe. Let's see. Does anyone else have a clue? Have they seen this before? Um, I thought it might have something to do with the world, like countries or something with weather, but I'm not really sure. Yeah, weather. Okay, another, so it could be about weather, but it's only looking like the, the northern half of the world is experiencing something. The southern half doesn't really look like it's experiencing much. What do we know about the northern half of the world? What What's going on there and what could all these colors mean? So does anyone know about um, geothermal stuff? If there's something hot, what color it might be? Or if there's something cool, what color that might be? Yes, Leon? If something's uh, hot, then it would be red. And if something's cool, it would be light blue or blue. Yeah, yeah. So it looks like something's going on that's causing the atmosphere to be a little hot, right, in this? Yeah. What causes the atmosphere to get a little hot? Does anyone know? Okay, Leon, I see your hand, but let's see if Aisha has any clue. Uh, maybe warming. Okay, okay. What what What's something that causes at, uh, warming in the atmosphere? Any clues? Deforestation. Deforest, wow, deforestation. Yeah, okay, that's one of them. Avrama? Bush Bannon. Okay, yes. Leon, how about you? I think you had um, a clue as well. Climate change. Climate change, okay. Has everyone heard about climate change? Yes. Yeah? yeah. Okay. So, what causes climate change? What's one of the uh, what's one of the contributions to climate change? Yeah, Leon. 
Um, greenhouse gases. Greenhouse gases, okay. And this is exactly what we're seeing. Perfect, right there. So it looks like there's a lot of CO2 production, CO2 being carbon dioxide, which is a greenhouse gas. And it's up in the Northern Hemisphere because that's where a lot of the industrialization and factories and cars are concentrated the most. So right now we're seeing a lot, a lot of greenhouse gases up there and it's creating Plum. some heat, some heat in our atmosphere. What? I think we're ready to go into our next question. So what produces most of the world's oxygen as opposed to carbon dioxide or greenhouse gases? We're gonna ask a different question because we already know what causes a lot of the carbon dioxide and greenhouse gases, but maybe people don't know what, off, what creates the most oxygen in the atmosphere. Um. Yes, Aisha? I think marine, um, marine plants and trees. Okay, well, let's go to our next question and see what everyone else thinks. Okay, so marine plants, trees, are there any other things that absorb or create oxygen? How about animals? Okay, so we have marine algae or B, trees, C, animals, or D, fungi. So maybe we can discuss while everyone else is, they have 19 seconds going right now, 18, 17. Let's discuss before everyone answers. So trees, I heard, marine, marine algae, which is a marine plant, that could be right. Animals or fungi, yeah, Leon? I think trees, uh, because um, trees are one of the main um, main uh, um, producers of world's oxygen because it feeds us air and there are lots of trees are being cut down so we're losing air and so that's why climate change is happening. That's just a good okay. Wow that's yeah that's a lot of information right there and then I see a couple of hands. Avrama do you have something to add to that? Something new? Mm, the same I go for tree because they you take the trees? carbon and they gave us oxygen. Mm -hmm. Okay, and Aisha, do you want to stick with your marine plants or do you want to go for trees like Leon and Avrama? I'll just stick with marine plants I learned in school. I may be wrong, okay. I'm not sure. All right, well, let's see what everyone else answered and then we can discuss why someone's right and someone's wrong. Let's see. So I have all the results, Eileen, and most of our uh, viewers actually went with the choice trees as Aurama and Leo. Uh, but uh, some, of our, some of our viewers uh, said uh, marine algae like Aisha. So, and I was surprised to learn this as well. I mean, for, like for years, I thought that trees are producing oxygen. And it was pretty strange for me to learn there are some like other living things in the ocean and they are producing <laughs> oxygen more than trees does. So I am eager to learn more about this. Yeah, exactly. So we're going to show you what marine algae looks like and then we're going to discuss how in fact they produce more oxygen than trees in the world. You guys ready? So what we're looking at right now is marine algae. It looks kind of small. In fact, this kind of looks microscopic a little bit, if you've seen a microscope. So and they're all around the world. I mean, the ocean is so big. So if you're thinking about land, land, you only have so much uh, land to grow trees. And like Leon said, we're cutting down a lot of trees. But in the ocean, there's so much space for marine algae to grow that you can have a lot more marine algae to suck in the uh, uh, carbon dioxide and release oxygen. And it looks like marine algae gets eaten by plant, you know, animals in the um, ocean as well. So right now you're seeing the absorption, suck, suck, suck of all of the carbon dioxide by the marine algae, right? And look at that, do you see all of those colors around the world? 
right there. So all of those colors, where, what do you think is really like where the marine algae grow? Is it in the middle of the ocean or is it by the coast? Yeah, Leon? Mostly by the coasts. Okay, yeah, a lot of life actually happens in the oceans around the coasts and shallower waters and less in like the deep, deep oceans. But here you have, we can call them marine algae forests, maybe, you know, if we want to compare them to forests. So in fact, they give off uh, oxygen through this process called photosynthesis. Has anyone heard of photosynthesis before? Yes. Yep. Okay. Leon, Aisha, have you, Avrama, have you heard of photosynthesis? Yes. Okay. So can anyone explain to me in like a quick sentence what photosynthesis is? It's how plants make food. Okay, exactly. They make food. So how do they make food? What's necessary to make food? Sunlight. Sunlight, exactly. Water. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Leon? Oil, because they need somewhere to go from. What was that oil you said? Soil. Soil. Well, maybe not all of them, because we saw that uh, marine algae actually don't live in soil. They're in the ocean. Okay. So maybe not soil, maybe yes, soil. But yeah, photosynthesis. You need sunlight. You need carb, you know, they take carbon dioxide and then they they take those ingredients and produce oxygen, but also glucose, which is what they eat. And that's really important. So do we know how, what do you think? Um, how, what's the percentage of oxygen algae produces versus maybe let's say the Amazon rainforest? Anyone guesses? How, uh, like how much of earth is filled with water? Do you know that? Like uh, how much of this, yeah, Lian, surface area? Uh, 90%. 90%, a little bit lower than that, I think. A little bit lower than that. Anyone? Yeah, yeah Leon. second guess. 75%. 75% is correct, yeah. So around 75 and when you like look from that point of view, like 25% of the land, uh, earth is land and 75 is the sea, maybe it can give an estimation. So what, what do you think about this then? How much of the oxygen is being produced by marine algae? Any estimation, like the one that you made, Liam, maybe? No? Yeah? 20%? <laughs> you are, you are, you are going with the trees? No, but this is a surprising fact. And when I learned it, I really was surprised. Like almost 70, 75% of the oxygen in the world is being produced by marine algae. Uh, trees are responsible uh, for the remaining part, you can say. But it, it, it made sense afterwards because, like, look at all these oceans, seas, and all of these places are covered with algae, right? Marine algae, you see? There are way more than trees. Trees are only this much, you see? Trees. But algae cover more space than trees. So uh, after checking this <laughs> map, actually I understood that like most of the oxygen, of course, is being produced by marine algae. Yeah. And a fun fact, you know, the Amazon rainforest, one of the biggest rainforests in the world, it's called the lung of the earth. But in fact, it only produces 6% of the world's oxygen. So now you can see how important marine algae is in the world in producing oxygen for us and taking carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere. 
And so it's really important that what? We make sure that the marine algae is healthy, just like we make sure rainforests and forests are healthy in this world, right? So maybe we can talk about what's going on with marine algae around the world. We have another video for you. Jihan, are we ready to show them that video? Actually, this is a photo. And oh, this photo, yeah. yeah. This photo is taken in Istanbul, guys, the place that I live in right now. So you see, there's a like beautiful, beautiful sea in Istanbul called Marmara Sea. And it has two Bosphorus, two other like canals, two other two seas. <coughs> but today, like nowadays, we are seeing like pictures like this. And yeah. what do you think would be the reason of this? Yeah, what do you think causes? So marine algae doesn't look like this when it's healthy, but it look right now it's unhealthy. It's called snot. So what do you think might contribute to that? Anyone? Any guesses? Yes, Leon. Um, people throwing uh, trash into the water. That's a very, yeah, that's a very good observation and guess. That's one of them, exactly. So, in fact, um, algae kind of get, so they turn into sludge when it's overloaded with nutrients. And a lot of those nutrients they can suck up from waste, you know, and water pollution that we put in. So, for example, another thing like this happened off the coast of the United States, where I'm from. When there was an oil spill in the Gulf Co in the Gulf of Mexico, there was an oil spill, and all of that nutrients from the oil you see it even looks like an oil spill. It was sucked up by the algae, and it turns into snot. This algae snot, and it's not healthy because it can't, you know, absorb as much carbon dioxide uh, as as healthy algae can, and it's not as healthy for the animals that feed off of algae. So what's really important here when, when we're thinking about coastal life and coastal um, health and the health of algae, what do we need to do maybe to make sure that we don't produce the snot? Aisha, Avrama? Well, okay, I'll, I'll maybe chime in here. I say that we need to be better about protecting the coast from oil spills and maybe avoiding that as much as possible. That's one of them. Maybe anything about plastics that we can do, make sure that they don't go into the ocean with plastics. And then, yes, Leon. You can uh, um, not use plastics a lot and recycle. Perfect, exactly. So we just learned a lot about algae. We saw that it contributes to 60% of the oxygen in the world. That is really important and that we need to protect our coastal um, spaces and our oceans to make sure that we may have algae to produce oxygen. But it looks like we're out of questions on this and we're gonna move on to the next topic. Is everyone ready? Okay, so we're gonna have you watch this next video and we're gonna see what you make of it. Let's see together. And this is another nice video I have to, like I want to show you guys. Let's check together. Now there is something. What do you see Aisha? What's this place? Um, a whale? A whale, yes, 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 I did. we are with you. Oh, a whale, yeah, exactly. And our first question is going to be, what do whales eat? So is it A, seaweeds and plants, B, piranhas, C, animals with shells like krill, or D, sharks? Does anyone know this answer? What whales eat? They're really big. Leon, you have an idea. 
um, small crust disease like krill. Yeah, yeah. And Aisha? Um, same thing. Same thing. Okay. How about you, Avrama? Any same. idea? Same? Okay. It looks like we have a consensus. I wonder if everyone else joining us also knows. Perhaps we look at the answer. Yeah, most of our viewers actually agree with them. Whales do eat small crustaceans like krills. <laughs> exactly. And I wonder why that is. I think we have a video of, of them eating them. So maybe we can look at that and see why whales eat this. So what do we know about whales? Do they have teeth? Do they, um, like, how do they eat so much? They're really big, so they have to eat a lot. Okay, Leon or Avrama, I see your hand up too. All I know is that whales don't have teeth. They don't have teeth. So they're swallowing them, but how do they keep them in if they don't have teeth? They're swallowing them. They're taking in a lot of water too, but they're also taking in the krill. So how do they like filter out the water to make sure that the krill stay in their mouth? I think I think that the water, it comes out of the nose on top of your head. Oh, like the blowhole where that comes from? Okay, that's interesting. All right, how about you, Leon, do you know? Um, I agree with- You agree that that's how they filter out the water? Aisha, how about you? I don't know the answer. Okay, well, maybe Sunday, I see you, you look like you have an idea. No, I just I just nodding to what Aisha said there as a very, very honest answer that she doesn't know the answer. Yeah, and that's you know, why you come here to learn. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes we don't know the answers, and that's totally okay. And that's why we're here today to learn. Mm -hmm. Well, in fact, so every, everyone was right. Avarama, they don't Leon, they don't have teeth, but they have this thing that their teeth are in fact like toothbrushes. They they are called um, they're bristles. They're kind of like what we think of toothbrush to be like. They don't have teeth and they don't eat their prey by going after them fast. They just swallow them in large bodies. They're like vacuum cleaners. And these teeth are big enough to capture the krill, but uh, spaced out enough to actually filter out the water. So they only use that blowhole to take in air, not to filter out the air. And we're seeing those teeth right now. And those are kind of like the cage and they're going to keep in the krill, swallow them, but let out all the water. And in fact, those teeth are very special. They're very different from other types of animals. They don't, they're not like teeth like sharks. And in fact, um, humans use them at some point. Actually, yeah. we have another question related with that, Eileen. Uh, but before going that, I have a like small question. Like, mm -hmm. what size are these whales? Do you know, guys, like size of a whale? Liam? Um, the size of three school buses. <laughs> not one, not two, but three. <laughs> yes, definitely. So they go up to like 50 meters. 50 meters long and do any one of you know the size of a krill, average size of a krill? I only say I don't know the size, I say that they are very small. <laughs> very small, it's like, like my finger, smaller than my finger, like this big. And can you imagine like three? school bus long whale how much do they eat of this krill so it's pretty strange to learn this as well whales do not eat other sea creatures than like these small uh, uh krills like they don't attack to other fishes too much most of their diet actually is belong to krills like other uh, sea creatures like krills it was a strange thing for me as well so uh, but we can move to the next question before that i will show the leaderboard eileen uh, to our viewers and let's see how our uh, 
show is going. Uh, our first rank is Safir and second Piri and the, three, the third one is Ad, uh, Ada Lawless and we will continue our show with our next question and we have a video of it again a video of a whale guys so let's check together if we have anything different than start to third question yes Aileen we are with you Okay, so again, keeping in mind how special those teeth are, our next question is going to be, for what purpose did people use whale teeth in the past? A, for toothbrush, B, for makeup, C, for shirt, collars, and dresses, or D, for medicine? So looking at all of those teeth right there, it's they're very interesting. I don't think I've seen anything like it. And it looks like the options that we have, A for toothbrush, B for makeup, C for shirts, collars and dresses, and D for medicine. It looks like these teeth could be used for a lot of different purposes. I don't know. It's, it's very interesting to think about that these teeth were used in our everyday lives. I said, think of it like a toothbrush, but does anyone guess that it might be used for a toothbrush? Do you think we use those, you know, whale bristles, whale teeth as toothbrush? Aisha, do you think so? I think either it could be for toothbrush or medicine because I don't think that shirt collars and makeup would be in the past. Mm. Okay. So we have to think about it. Um, they might not be the best for makeup. They might not. I actually don't know too much about the whale's teeth, but does anyone else have a clue? Do we see it in our shirts and collars and dresses? Do doctors use it? Yes, Avarama? I guess for medicine. For medicine, okay. So let's see what everyone else thinks. I think um, everyone's answered by now. Yeah, of course. So uh, like most of our viewers thinks that it was used for toothbrush and none of them thinks for makeup. And we have a couple uh, for, for shirt colors and dresses and for medicine. So it is a strange uh, question for me as well. But uh, let's hear from you, Eileen. What is the answer? <laughs> The answer is, get ready, C for shirts and collar and dresses. That's, that's what? really interesting what? to me. How that come? Is, How come? Um, I, well, today's clothing, I don't see, I don't think I see any of whale's teeth. Um, so it had to be at some point we use them. So it looks like their teeth baleen. Um, is a certain material that I guess were used in our fashion at some point. Do you think we still use use it today, Baleen? Like the no? no? Okay. No. Do we know any? Does anyone know about uh, fashion in the past that it could have been used in? Okay, well, has anyone seen what a corset looks like? Yeah. Yeah, so a corset, This these were used a long time ago to actually shape a woman's body. And you see here that it has 120 bones just structuring it right there. And it just, it was a bodice. It was like they're lining the whole thing and out like out of all of the products in the world, they used fish. They call them uh, whale bone or whale bones, but in fact, uh, ba it's baleen. It's made out carotene. Do you know what carotene is in our body? Nails. We have it. It's in our fingernails. It's a type of protein. We grow it too, just like the uh, baleen. You know, in in a whale's teeth. How weird is that? We were using whale teeth to dress ourselves. So I, I think I think it's still used today. Is it still used today? Yeah. The, the garlic dadu. People female use it to fill really shape their body before they put their dress on. You know, yeah. it probably is used today, but not 
why everyone back then I think it was the fashion everyone was using this and when you have everyone using it you have more whales going towards it you have more whale hunting so it looks like now that that's out of fashion there's less whale in our clothes right Aurama Aurama hey uh who who is is that your brother sister yeah my little brother Hello, uh, what's his name? Frank. Uh, hi, uh, we want to have you in our one of our show. Uh, you can you can continue watching with Aurama. Aurama, maybe he can help you too. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Welcome to, Welcome to the show. Yes, Eileen, we can move on. Uh, uh, one thing I know that corset and it is forbidden to use balloons uh, now. But as Sunday uh, mentioned, uh, now the corsets are being used as well. They are being used for health purposes also. So, mm -hmm. like, there might be a problem with your, like, uh, spine. And it is being yeah, used yeah. to... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, and uh, now balloons are not being used instead of that. What is being used? Leon, do you have an idea? Oh, I remember learning about corsets and apparently when the people used to wear them in the Tudor times, you could like die from it because it pressed too much on your um, body. Yeah, you can't breathe as much if someone's like, if something's restricting your lung capacity, right? You need, when you inhale, your lungs go out. And then if you have a corset, your lungs can't expand that much. So yeah, so there's a good reason why we don't have corsets and are not using whale baleen. Aisha, I saw your hand up. Did you have anything to add? No, I was just going to ask a question. Please do. Um, is it harmful for the whale if you, uh, if you, take, if you take its teeth or or is it fine? Um, in most cases, it is harmful because those teeth are really important on how it eats. So if you take away our teeth, we can't chew. Well, for them, if you take away their teeth, they can't keep the krill in and they need to eat a lot of krill to survive. So yeah, so it's, it's probably a good thing for the whales that we don't use, you know, corsets and, and um, baleen in our clothing anymore. So yeah, good question. And and that's, we could learn more about that, about the whale population. But I think we're going to move on to our next topic, right, Jihan? Yes, but before that, Aisha made me think twice about this question. And when we think that for medicine, for makeup, for, for the materials that we use every day in our home. Uh, mm -hmm. So animals being used animals are being used so we need to watch out guys because like every living being uh, is precious right so we need to learn to live in harmony with all those animals so instead of using them for our and it is not like it is not something we need right corset not everyone needs it it is for like looking good or it is because you think that you need to have it, but animals are there. So Aisha, thank you for making me rethink this twice again. We should be responsible, act responsible. Thank you, Aisha. And now we have our next question. And what do you see in the picture, guys? What do you see? Aurama, uh, just a second, just a second, just a second. If you see an animal, don't name it, okay? Other than animal, you can, you can, you can tell me what do you see? Yes, Aurama. <laughs> leaves. 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 leaves, yeah. Any, anything other than leaves, Leon? I can see a small animal in the leaves. Okay, so then we will, we will ask the question, what animals do you see in the picture? Eileen, we are with you. <laughs> Exam exactly. So which animal is using camouflage in this photo? Is it A, a frog, B, a snake, C, an ant, or D, a caterpillar? 
So camouflage, something's hiding in those leaves, but what exactly could be hiding is the question we're asking. Okay, Leon, Avrama, you guys have an idea maybe. Avrama, let's hear from you. What do you think is in there? A frog. A frog? Okay. Leon? I think a frog too, because... Okay. Aisha, do you have any, do you think it's something else? No, I think the same. Okay, it looks like we have a consensus again. So yes, it is a frog. It's a really well-hidden frog, in fact, and it's really hard to see them. And uh, frogs are actually really great. I mean, frogs are not the only thing that can camouflage themselves, right? But frogs are really, really cool. In fact, they're one of the oldest creatures. Did you know that, guys? No. no. They are. Why do you think they're one of the oldest creatures? What's so special about them that makes them able to live kind of like longer than any other species? Yes, go ahead, Leon. Um, they can camouflage and uh, some of them, when you touch them, they die. Um, the, um, whatever touched it could um, die or they go um, unconscious. Wow, yeah. So they, they, some of them are poisonous. And the As we saw, they can camouflage. How about one other thing? What makes frogs so special versus other animals? Is it a reptile? Is it a mammal? What? How does it live? Where does it live? Yes, Avrama? Um, for me, it's because um, they live on land and in water. In water. Yeah, I think that's exactly it. Because you get the best of both worlds, right? Yes, Aisha, do you have anything to add? It's an amphibian. Amphibian, that's exactly the word for what they are. So they're an amphibian. So that means they live on both land and water. And in fact, we found fossils from 264 million years ago of frogs living on Earth. And they spread across the world and their ability to survive for long periods of time is their ability, you know, comes from their ability to live on both land and water. They lay their eggs underwater like we see here. And if we can play the video, we can see how they live. So their eggs, they start off as little eggs. And then when they hatch, do you know what they're called when they hatch? Yes, Aisha. That was... Exactly, tadpoles, and they live in shallow water. And so they grow up in the water. Their, off, their offspring is born with tails like tadpoles and they swim there for a while. And they kind of change as they grow up. Do you see this? They're growing legs now. Their tail is kind of going away. They're, they're kind of transforming into the frogs that we know now. And it looks like when they grow up, they start going on land. So they start off in water and then in land. So when they're underwater, can they breathe air? Do they have lungs? Can you have lungs underwater? I know it's a weird question, but if you think really hard. Um, uh, Arlene, can you repeat the question? Yeah, of course. So can you have lungs underwater? Do these tadpoles have lungs? Okay, Jihan. Yeah, so let's think this way. Underwater, right? What did we see in the first question? What was the animal in first question? Huh? Three bus long, Leon. Three bus long. Three bus size. A whale. A whale. A whale. And is a, a whale, uh, are the whales are mammals or fishes? Mammals. Oh, no. So, no. what does mammal mean? Um, they, they're warm-blooded and they give milk to their babies, I think. Yes, anything else, Aurama? They give birth, they don't lay eggs. They give birth, they don't lay eggs. And one more thing, Aisha? I was about to say the same thing, sorry. Same thing, okay. So, are we mammals? Are humans mammals? Yeah. Okay. yeah. How do we breed? 
How do we breathe? Do we have lungs? Yeah. Yes. So we have lungs, right? So then, uh, like three distinguishing things about mammals are the ones that you have said, but being uh, like uh, a mammal requires that, that you need to have lungs. Okay. So if you have lungs, you probably are, uh, you, you are a mammal and this might be a like differentiating thing. Yeah. Exactly. So frogs, they have lungs, right? You see them breathing? But how do they breathe underwater when they're tadpoles? What do you think is different about them? Yeah, Leon? Um, I've got a question. Um, if, um, if, um, if, um, if you can, uh, if mammals have lungs and some mammals like whales and whales live underwater but don't they have to breathe then in um water then when they're underwater or so they that's a really good question and in fact we do you remember the video that we saw about the whales coming up so right now what's going on there you see that burst of burst of uh wa um, water spraying up do you see that they have a thing called a blowhole on their head where they come up they spray out the water on top of their blowhole, and then at the same time, they inhale a big gulp of air. Yeah, Leon? But then, then frogs can't really stay underwater for as long as they, could, they can. Then they have to eventually come up out into the open then. Yeah, so I'm going to share a cool fact with you. And th this blew my mind when I learned about it. So as tadpoles, they live underwater. 100% of the time, that's where they're growing up and they have gills. So they filter oxygen from the water. You know what the fish have gills? But the fact is when they grow up, you see them transforming to become land animals, you know, something that can breathe on land. So once they grow up and you see them breathing right now, from a tadpole, they have gills and those gills go away. So then they form lungs. So they, they are both suited for land and water. It just depends on what part of the li like of their life cycle they're in, which is amazing. There's not very many amphibious animals like frogs out there. And that is probably one of the reasons why they've lived so long. Eileen, we can move to the next week. Oh, Sunday, yeah, please go ahead. I just wanted to add something. Where else can we see the, uh, the uh, ability of the frog to camouflage? Do you know where else it's been applied in the world? Yeah, Leon? Um, do chameleons use camouflage too? Yes, they do. But I'm talking more of a practical application around us. Have you, have you guys out of Seth's plane? Those military planes. Oh, yeah, yeah I that heard can, it. I heard it Sunday. Yeah. yeah. That you can hear, but you can't yeah. see them. They copy the same technology from the frog. Oh, the, the, yeah. like, they're sort of greenish. That's color. right. Yeah. But sometimes you cannot see them because they, they, they change color with the cloud around them, with the color around them. So the same technology, the same thing, ability for a frog to change its color. The, the, the military also develop their uh, planes or their drones to, to change color so that when they're flying onto enemy grounds, the enemy can't see them. I have a so question. We learn a lot from animals. I have a question, Dr. Sunday. Is, yeah? there, is there a word for how humans kind of copy these types of things in nature, like they see something that an animal does and they want to kind of use science to like copy that? Yeah, we, we do it all the time in architectures. If you see a lot of building around, you know, some of the form of the building is, is a shape of something that animals have created. Look at a spider, the way they do their net. You see quite a lot of uh, uh, a ring or anything that's got circular and is suspended up there. Is saying the same technology. All the, all the, uh, all the. Uh, uh, I'm trying to remember what I'm trying to say now. 
biomimicry. Uh, the animals biomimicry. create those pets. Huh? I think it was biomimicry. The name was the 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 like this concept is biomimicry. Like bio, right, that's right. right? Bio so, means so we learn, yeah. yeah. So we learn a lot from animals the way they do their thing. Even the way plane flying. You know how plane flies? That's from bird flying. They flap their wings so quickly and create pressure under them, and it's the pressure that lifts them up. So the design of a plane was based on that as well. When you're on a flight, you don't see the wind flagging, but believe me, it is moving quite a lot, very, very fast. Yes, Leon? Um, don't the Navy also use the same thing as animals when they do how they fly? Because yes. I know they fly like a V, like... Indeed, um, indeed. Yeah. And, and, uh, and the Army also use it. Oh. Even their clothing, yeah? Their, cam their fam camouflage. Uh, clothing, they merge with the leaves. So when they're hiding in the bush, the enemy can't see them because their color merged with the with the surrounding. So it's, it's applicable all over. Yeah, and I think we and, get a lot of we get a lot of inspiration from frogs everywhere. They can camouflage. Yeah. Amphibious um, landings, for example, is something we've used. Mm -hmm. uh, we learn a lot from around us, and frogs are very special in that case that they can do a lot of things. Um, like Leon said, they're poisonous, they can change color, they camouflage, yes. they live on land and sea. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Sunday, I'm sure there's so many applications. Biomimicry is a great way. There's inspiration all around us to create new technologies, good technology, yeah. and frogs is just another one of those. And if anyone wants to become an expert on that, I'm sure there's many, many more things we can learn about frogs yeah. and how. So if, you, if you see anything that animal does, try and see how you can apply that. Exactly. Try and see what you can make out of that in real life. And then come to us, let's discuss it and we'll make something out of it. They are more than like two million years old. They know a lot of stuff. We need to check them. We need to observe them. We need to learn from them. They are living and we need to, we need to adapt those capabilities to yeah. the, our daily lives, not by harming animals, but by watching them and by learning from them. And yeah. it was it was a really strange. And illusionists are the ones that are trying to do the same. Like they are trying to camouflage all the time, right, Eileen? And we have a question about an illusionist. What is he doing here? Exactly. I mean, <laughs> so. Maybe someone's seen this before in a square or a plaza. A Aisha, your hand was up. Have you seen this before? Yes, yes. A man is seemingly levitating. No, I, I by mistake raised my hand. Okay. So why are we talking about this? Just like a frog that can camouflage something, they hide themselves. An illusionist does the same thing. They trick our eyes and our minds to believing what they want us to see. Does anyone know the secret behind how someone can levitate? I think we can ask viewers and can chat on it. Exactly. So I'm going to ask the question, how can this street illusionist stand like this? A, he's strong so he can elevate leaning on the stick. B, he can elevate since he's a Buddhist. C, there's a hidden seating setup underneath. D, he doesn't. The chair underneath is removed with Photoshop. <laughs> so Aisha, what do you questions? think? Like, do you think... Could it be Photoshop? No? Why? Why Aisha? I think because the reflect the um the shadow is a little too back. Wow, I didn't even think about that. Yeah, but you would see the shadow if it was photoshopped out of there probably. And and there are people who stand in there live watching it. Yeah, yeah, and they they look like very surprised. So you can't you can't Photoshop like amazement on somebody's people's face. Usually, they're they're trying to figure it out too, and they're discussing it. So I'm gonna repeat the questions one more time, and we're gonna see like if anyone else wants to chime in. Leon, I see your hand up. Um, uh, is it there's a hidden seating under? 
Yep, exactly. There is a hidden seating under. So <laughs> I think if we show better than X, if we show you how it's set up, it's better than explaining because it is quite interesting. And these illusionists spent a lot of time to, to get us to, to believe that they're levitating. But in fact, there's a stand where you have a platform and then that platform has rods connected to it and then a platform right above it. So it's centered out. So you can have an empty space above the platform and have a platform above. So you can have two people there, one of them sitting on the ground and the other person levitating. And that's exactly what was happening with the first photo. He probably had a platform and then the rod, this cane he was holding was this, like the stick, the rod keeping up the second platform and he was just sitting on it. So he was sitting all day, but he was amazing people all day too. In, in, really engineer, in engineering, this is what we call cantilever structures. Yeah, in other words, this is where he's sitting, but this arm is so strong enough that this bit will be able to take the load. So if I'm holding up to this phone here, which is, and it could be very effy, but because this platform is so good, so strong, he was able to carry the load that I'm holding on. That the weight of this guy, this cantilever structures, is able to carry that and transfer it onto the ground. So that's exactly what's happened there. If they, where the guy put his arm just now, if that joint wasn't strong enough, the whole thing would just collapse. But that joint is strong enough to take all his weight and transfer it to where his arm is, and then along the, 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 uh, the member that says two, and then to the foundation that says three. Number three also have to be very, very strong. Otherwise, the whole thing will tip you over. So yeah. it's got cantilever structures. So illusionists probably know a little bit about engineering then, if yes, that's the yes, case, yes. right? They have to not only be entertainers and performers, but they also have to understand a little bit of engineering to make that happen, cantilever structures. Okay, I'm gonna keep that in mind next time I see one of these guys. But while we're talking about balance and everything and kind of like, we're just gonna go into this like interesting photo here. And I'm gonna ask you guys, what is wrong in this picture? So we were just talking about the need for stability and kind of strong platforms and everything, but what is wrong with this picture? <laughs> here. So I'm going to read off the uh, read off the questions. And then Leon, I'm going to ask you what you think. Okay. So a they're making lots of profit. B they're traveling safely. C the load is in perfect balance. Or D they did not consider the center of gravity on the load. So what do you guys think? I mean, obviously they did a great job stacking things. So it could be C. Yes, Aisha? Um, how, how, they've only put three strings around. So how aren't um, some parts of it falling off? The two side parts falling off. Okay. Yeah, that could happen, definitely. It doesn't look very safe, but Leon? Um, I think it could be in balance because um, otherwise it would have fallen over. And if it's in, um, if both sides have the exact same, exact um, same amount of weight, then it would stand. Okay. Yeah. That's, I mean, it takes a lot of skill to balance things. So they're not falling over yet. But um, let's see what everyone else on the app might have said. So if we're looking at the questions again, a, B, C, or D, if we had to give an answer, which answer do you think it would be? So A being they're making lots of profit, B, they're traveling safely, C, the load is in perfect balance, or D, they did not consider the center of gravity in this load. Yes, Leon? C. C, okay. Anyone else want to give an answer? Alvarama? Same thing, C. C, okay. Aisha? Okay. Well, I, I have try. a I have a question, mm -hmm. Eileen. The mm -hmm. question says, "What is wrong in this picture?" Right? Yeah. So, oh. what oh, is wait. wrong in this picture? So yeah, yeah, the question really matters. Yeah. 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 Yeah
matter what kind of questions you're asking. So what's wrong in this picture? Does anyone want to change their mind now? Avrama, I see your hand up. Leon, you too. You, you rethinking a little bit? The egg of the bee. Yeah, D. D. Anyone else want to change the answer to D? D. Leon, Aisha, you too? Okay, okay. So it looks like we tricked you there a little bit. And at the end, yes, it is D. They did not consider the center of gravity. Um, center of gravity is really important when you're thinking about when you're loading something and what, you know, what is in your truck or even what you're carrying, how you are, you have a center of gravity. But if you look at this truck, imagine it trying to turn a corner. What do you think is going to happen? Yes, Abrama? The flip. Tip over. Yeah, and that's what we're going to see right here. If you have something that's turning a corner, there's elevation, there's any sort of movement, you start seeing oh, a tipping point. And the center of gravity has everything to do with this. Yes, Leon? Um, well, you could actually make it pass, but you have to do it really slowly. Because um, if, yes. oh, if you were going really fast, so you have to be like the right speed just to get the corner. But Leo, just for chart, in here, there is no speed. I mean, it is so slow, but still, still, this side... Like a, that, that turns more of like a hilly turn. You can see that it's leaning in. Mm-hmm. So I have another video for that. <laughs> I also think the bottom, the bottom back tire went into a hole. Exactly. And that destabilized the lorry. Can you see where the arrow is? That, and it's very funny that the white car that passed by was very lucky. Because oh, I yeah. Crushed. <laughs> so we're going to explain a little bit about that. I mean, Leon, you bring up a great point exactly. I mean, turn. it matters what kind of turn you're making. But overall, the center of gravity is going to be really important on, um, on how cars or anything really uh, turn in motion. There's like going to be a car that it's when it's closer to the ground, kind of like a sports car, the ones that make really sharp turns in NASCAR or in any type of racing, their center of gravity is going to be lower to the ground here. So it takes a lot more for that car to tip over. Right, you have to really just kind of like go really fast around a corner. There has to be something going on to make it tip. But with a truck, they're higher, right? So their center of gravity is higher. Yes, Leon. But also the air uh, aerodynamics of it, they're less likely to tip because um, the air um, depend uh, uh, the air going over it. Um, where if it's smaller, then it will um, it can go like faster. But then the aerodynamics of that will, if you're going too fast, it could fall over with lots of stuff in it. Wow, exactly. Are you a car guy, Leon? Do you like cars? Yeah, yeah. So that's exactly it. I mean, there's so much science behind cars, actually. Aerodynamic being one of them when you're talking about race cars. Center of gravities being one of them when you're talking about trucks so right there you see a truck that's empty not loaded it takes about it's at 50 degrees it takes you see that until it starts tipping right so the so a truck that doesn't have anything on there 50 degrees but what if the truck has something on it what changes do you think it's going to tip yeah leon uh, it's heavier, so it has more weight, so it would tip um, earlier. Okay, let's take a look. So last time it was 50 degrees. Now it's tipping at oh, 20. around 20. Exactly. Yeah. So you're seeing what, what weight and what a load can do to a truck in the center of gravity. And so the, the very first photo that we saw, the one that we asked you that question, what is wrong with this picture? Well, it had to do with the center of gravity. That truck, no doubt tip on any, like on, a, on any type of turn that if they're take, going too fast, if they're on an incline, if it's hilly, 
And that's really dangerous, right? We want to make sure our roads are safe. We want to make sure we get home safely. So we want to have people pack their trucks responsibly. And that goes with what? Responsible decision making, right? Yes, Leon. I have a question. If um, if there's like a, if you have like an SUV sort of car and then two people sit on the same side of like the car. So like if you were to put a line of symmetry through the middle and one person was sitting on, I don't know, the right side, would the car tip if it was turning on the right? <laughs> That's a really good question, honestly. I Gina, I, yeah, I like I'm, a, I'm a mechanical engineer, Leon. So cars, elevators, uh, buildings, like the things that we use or we live inside are designed with safety factors. Okay. So by doing, by meaning safety factor, for example, I'm saying that like this car can carry like four people. Okay. So what is the weight of four people, average weight of four people? Let's say like 80 kilograms adults, 80 kilograms is average times four. I am designing this vehicle for 300 kilograms, uh, 320 kilograms, let's say. Okay. So if like it is dangerous to use that vehicle, we need to multiply this kilogram with safety factor so that we become sure that our design will work without harming anyone. So safety factor for cars, for elevators, for uh, the things that we use in our daily life and dangerous ones are designed with high safety fa uh, factors. So mm -hmm. the question that you asked, it, it, uh, it affects like the number of passengers, which side they are sitting inside of the car. It affects, of course, the uh, tipping point, let's say, but the effect would not be that much. But in the case of a truck, it is different. Okay. So in the case of truck, uh, the trucks should not carry more weight than they should <laughs> they design because there is uh, the effect of those weights, additional weights are higher because of higher center of gravity, like in this picture. Uh, let's see it together. So it is heavy, the truck is heavy. You can put all of this weight, but as you put weight, the center of gravity goes higher. So tipping angle gets lower. So the question was great. And it is the like foundation of engineering, one of the foundations of engineering. Yes, Aurama. What is um, something flying the sky and yeah, suddenly falls. Um, um, it is in the sky, but um, how will it? I don't know how to put it, but I'm trying to. Like... You, were, you were saying if that was a plane, how would center of gravity affect the plane turning? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Uh, it is yeah it is a great question again so in planes center of gravity uh, is again important and uh, the center of gravity should lie like somewhere inside of the plane but number of passengers that enters the plane affect the center of gravity right and luggage too mm -hmm. And luggage. The pilots always have to do a lot of math before they start a plane. They have to know how many people are in the plane and how much luggage and how much luggage that weighs. So you see a lot of factors affecting center of gravity, which Gian is going to talk to you about. But I wanted to say luggage matters. Yeah. So for planes, uh, yes, Aurama. So weight is very important when it comes. Yeah, definitely. Weight is very important when it becomes to movement. Okay, so like as you get fit, for example, you get to run faster, more balanced, right? But if you gain weight, more weight, it becomes harder for you to move. So it's same for people, it's the same for vehicles. So you, you need to adjust it. Okay, so what they are doing with the planes, for example, the ones that are sitting at the back are heavier than normal. Okay, so some of the planes has counterweights okay 
So in the luggage room, let's say, okay, if the back of the plane is more heavier, they put these counterweights at the front of the plane. They move, it is like a rail system under the plane, and they move these counterweights back and forth in order to have a balance. Isn't it great? <laughs> So we are at the end of our quest today and I am ready to announce our winner Eileen. Uh, I'm just sharing it with my, our viewers. So today's winner is Danu. Danu, congratulations to Danu. He will get a robotic art kit from us. So I want to see lots of experiments and I want to see the experiments that you complete uh, inside of our Twin Mobile Lab guys. So Congratulations to Donna once again. And I want to remind to the viewers and uh, today from YouTube or our mobile app. So if you want to be a co-host today, if you want to share your knowledge, ideas like Leon, Aurama and Aisha today, please contact us inside of the uh, TV mobile app and we will see you next show. And if you are watching this from YouTube and if you want to be involved in interactive uh, contests that we have inside of our app you can download the app with the QR code that you see in the screen and next week you can have the chance to win the robotic art kit so it was a great session today I learned a lot from all of our viewers and all of our participants Leon, Aisha, Aurama if you have any question or Anything to like share, uh, please go ahead. Yeah. I enjoyed the show. I just want to thank everyone, Leon, Sunday, Avarama, Aisha. I learned a lot from you guys. I learned from you too, Jihan. Um, and I was really excited to be with you. Thank you so much. That's I'm so glad we had such good discussions and talked about everything. Um, if there's one thing that I thought was the coolest out of the STEM show, I think it was about uh, the amphibian frogs and like how old they are. Um, that stuck out to me. Was there anything that stuck out to you guys in the STEM show? The whale. The whale? Yes, yeah, that's something new too. I didn't quite know about that. Still, yeah, Leon? Um, the, uh, the weight the balance. You know, and I suggest there's so many cool things to research, like Avrama, if you're interested in the whale's teeth and everything, you can go research about that. Leon, you are you seem like a really cool car guy. If you want to research about that and how re race cars talk about balance and center of gravity, I encourage you to research about that. Um, Aisha, is there anything that you thought was really fun? The balance in the way. Okay, same, same. All, and if you're interested in researching that, we encourage you. We want to hear about it. If you have anything you want to bring, um, next time join us for our STEM show. Join us on the Twin app. You can learn a lot there. Um, we enjoy learning from you guys, hearing from you guys, and learning with you. So thank you so much. And I'm going to leave it to Jihan to play. One more thing. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. I've also enjoyed myself very much. This is a totally new method of uh, impacting knowledge and sharing information. I've learned a lot today myself, and thank you to all of you for, for, for coming along today. Well done. Thanks, Sunday, for all the kind words. Leon, Aurama, Aisha, it was a privilege for me to be with you in this show, and I am looking forward to have next week's participants as well message us guys let's meet at the live stamp show and until next week have a good day bye. yeah we're going to space bye. to visit the sun bye. all aboard the rocket twin hopefully we'll learn enough from the sun to bring electricity back to the island ready to leave earth Walk Thank you.